Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is April 11. This is actually according to reckoning the day of the Passover. According to the Hebrew calendar, when the sun went down, that was the beginning of the day, not one, you know, not midnight, according to the what they call the Gregorian calendar, I guess. So this is the anniversary of the Passover in Egypt. The Lord struck Egypt with the plagues. And you got to realize something. Egypt had ordered the death of all the children, all the male children of the Hebrews, that they be cast into the Nile River. And uh, you, in case you don't know it, the Nile has crocodiles. Crocodiles aren't afraid of anything once they get over a certain size. You know, once they get about 14, 16 feet, they're not afraid of nothing. They're not even afraid of lions. I've seen videos of crocodiles going out of the water and stealing food from a pride or a group of lions. So what uh, chance would a baby have in a river full of crocodiles? I don't know. So when God drowned the Egyptian army, I guess you could say it was payback. Karma, as you will, for the New Agers. Or justice and judgment, as God would put it. So, Egypt thrust tells Israel, get out. I'm tired of all these plagues. And if any of you are interested, I did a video, well, an audio study on the plagues of Egypt and the plagues of Revelation. They're very similar in a lot of ways. They don't exactly follow everything, but they're similar. And they have some similarities. And a great deal of the symbolism of the New Testament draws from the Old Testament. So if you've never read the Old Testament, and then you read the New Testament, and it has symbolism, you'd say, well, I don't understand this. Well, of course not. You don't pick up a novel and then read the last chapter and then expect to understand what happened in the book. you got to read the first chapter. you got to read the whole book. And then you'll have an idea, hopefully. And hopefully it's not some stupid Stephen King novel. So, this Bible study is going to be on the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. All right, turn your King James Bibles to the book of Exodus, chapter 12. Now, don't let anybody ever talk you out of your King James Bible. I mean, it is, you know, there's a reason why there's 666 different versions of the Bible, because... You know, if all the Bibles were wrong, Satan wouldn't be spending so much time having his children, and oh yes, yeah, Satan has children, he wouldn't have them spending so much time putting out new Bible versions every couple of years. I mean, you got the complete Jewish Bible that in Revelation 22 says that Yeshua, which they claim is Jesus, calls himself the morning star. And then you go to Isaiah 14, and the morning star fell from heaven and is going down to the pit to be covered in worms. So is Yeshua the morning star going to the pit to be covered in worms after he fell from heaven, after he deceived the world? Yeah. That's what author David Stern, nice so-called Messianic Jew, believes. 
And they claim that this is the latest and greatest scholarship. Well, my King James Bible tells me in Isaiah 14 that Lucifer fell from heaven. So, keep your King James Bible, people. It'll be banned as a hate book one day. I mean, come on, find yourself a used bookstore, walk in, you could be buying Bibles for three to five, ten dollars all day long. You don't have to go to Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Well, Amazon stinks for buying Bibles. There was a girl in Australia uh, asked me to send her a Bible. Uh, I guess she couldn't find one in Australia. And I went to Australia's Amazon and I could not find a way to buy a King James Bible in Amazon Australia. I And then I looked trying to to find an, a store that would sell a Bible in Australia for a King James Bible so I could have sent it to her local without paying international shipping. I couldn't find one. I'm like, really? I'm not a complete idiot when it comes to online searching. I mean, I know how to do research. That's one thing they taught me in college was how to do research, and that was before the Internet. The Internet made it 95% easier. Couldn't find it. So I had to buy a King James Bible and mail it to her internationally. The postage was almost as, about the same price as the Bible, which I didn't mind, you know, and I'm not trying to get kudos. Uh, but, I mean, it's insane. So keep your King James Bible. So let's go to Exodus chapter 12. And the Lord, uh, verse 1, Exodus 12, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Now, I believe that when the days are of equal length, well, close to equal length, okay, it's called the equinox. It happens in the spring and it happens in the fall. Uh... I believe it's the 14 days or something after the equinox. I'm not sure how that works. But the Passover always falls either late March or, or around April. Okay? So that's, that's the beginning of the year. The spring, when people are planting their crops. You know, people... How did... How did December 31st and then leading to New Year's Eve, January 1st, the dead of winter, how does that become the beginning of the year? Gregorian calendar. Pope Gregory, I believe. Well, I'm sorry. I don't follow the Pope. I think we should follow the Hebrew calendar. And some people say, oh, it's Jewish, it's Jewish. No. Now, the only thing Jewish is the Talmud and the Kabbalah. The Babylonian Talmud and the Kabbalah. That's Jewish. And I don't want anything to do with that. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor take unto his house, take it according to the number of the souls, every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish. It should be spotless, people. A male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Well, guess what? All this symbolism points to Christ, and the Jews missed it, right? And ye shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take, take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. The blood of the Lamb, people! Do you see the symbolism in this? I mean, come on. You know, you 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 put the 
the blood on the door. Didn't Jesus say, I am the door? Oh, yes, he did. He sure did. He said, I am the door. Let's go to John chapter 10, verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. For the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. Sounds like uh, when Jesus warned about wolves in sheep's clothing. Turn on TBN and you can see a bunch of wolves in sheep's clothing. The hiring fleeth because he is in hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and have known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. In the book of Genesis, chapter 22, and verse 8, Abraham's son, Isaac, asked Abraham, where was the sacrifice? And what did Abraham say? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And that's in Genesis 22.8. In the first chapter of the book of John, we read some very interesting things. John the Baptist Now yeah, let's see. Let's start in I'm not sure where to start here. Let's start in verse 15, 1 John chapter 15. You know, when I start doing these Bible studies, I, I, they could be three, four hours long if I had the time. And I mean, we're just barely getting started, and it's been 15 minutes. This is just the introduction. John 1, verse 15, John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now, this is an interesting point. John was born before Jesus was. So, how is it that Jesus was before him? For he was before me. How can that be? Well, because Christ was God in the flesh. That's why. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So did you catch that? For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Christ is the Greek rendering of Messiah. And people don't ever get rid of the name of Jesus. Don't let, don't let the Antichrist Jews 
try to trick you into Yeshua. Okay, the New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Jesus, the most hated name on the planet. Among certain group of people in the Middle East. Verse 18, no man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. The only begotten Son. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? Ah. Now Elias is the Greek rendering of the word Elijah. Because the Jews know, at least the Bible-believing Jews know, that Elijah will come before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Matter of fact, let me look that up real quick. That is in Malachi chapter 4 and verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, was the first coming of Jesus the great and dreadful day of the Lord? No, absolutely not. He healed people of sicknesses and diseases and, uh, you know, raised the dead. That's not the great dreadful day of the Lord. Now, in Mark chapter 9 and verse 1, And he, Jesus, and he said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, There shall be some of them that stand here that shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Okay, so, and the preterists will use this to say that, you know, that's why everything was fulfilled in 70 AD, and we're not, right now we're just waiting for Christ to come back. Well, you know, if the preterists are wrong, and all this stuff wasn't fulfilled in 70 AD, the Messiah that they're looking for is going to be the Antichrist, when the Jews rebuild the temple, that I, in my opinion, I think they're going to do. Verse 2, And after six days Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up unto, into an high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became white, exceeding white as snow, as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them, and there appeared unto them Elias, Elijah, with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. Now, Moses represented the law. Elijah, Elias, represented the prophets. Didn't Jesus say that um, the two commandments represented the, the, the prophets, the law and the prophets? Matthew twenty two thirty five. 35. My longtime listeners have heard me say this many times. Then one of them which was a lawyer... And this is a lawyer of Bible law, not a lawyer like we have today that are antichrist and anything but Bible law. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, so this Bible law lawyer is asking Jesus a question. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. 
thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And your Torah keepers will scream and rant and rave about how Paul's a false apostle because he changed the law. No, Jesus changed the law. Love the neighbor, love thy love the Lord and love thy neighbor. That's the whole of the law and the prophets. He summed up the Ten Commandments in two. So, back to Mark 9. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. And suddenly when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore save Jesus only with themselves. So, you know, Elijah was the prophets. Moses was the law. Verse 9, And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one another what the rising from the dead should mean. And they asked him, saying, Why say the scribes that Elias must come first? That Elijah, right? And he answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first, and restoreth all things, and how it is written of the Son of Man, that he must suffer many things, and be said it not. But I say unto you that Elias is indeed come, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed, as it is written of him. So, Jesus, well, let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at Matthew 17. I think this is a better rendering than Mark, what we were reading. Verse 9. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must come first? And Jesus answered and said to them, Elias truly shall come first and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. See, John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elias or Elijah. So, some people will try to tell you that John the Baptist was Elijah or Elias. So, is that true? Well, let's take a look. Okay, let's go back to John chapter 1, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Now people will tell you that John the Baptist was Elias or Elijah, which is, the, you know, their Greek rendering of Elijah. I mean, come on. He says, no, I am not. I mean, come on. You think John the Baptist didn't know who he was? Really? Really? I mean, and there's people who say that John the Baptist did not know that he was not, that he was Eli, Elijah. Well, you know, that's reincarnation, people. Really, that's what they're telling you, reincarnation. Because John... The Baptist was born of Elizabeth, and Elijah was taken up into heaven. 
So basically, anybody that tells you that John the Baptist was was physically Elijah and he didn't know who he was is teaching reincarnation, which is New Age garbage and doesn't belong in the Bible. But believe it or not, Kabbalah does teach reincarnation, which is Jewish wisdom. And they asked him, what then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet. Isaiah. I'm sorry. Uh, Isaiah. And they which were sent of the Pharisees, and they asked him and said unto them, Why baptized, baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you, whom ye know not. He it is, whose coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. See, this is our, bap this is our Passover lamb right here. Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh the man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. All right, let's go back to Exodus. All right, let's see. Exodus 12, verse 5. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it. Keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. In John 6 and verse 30, uh, 53, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Boy, that's some pretty hard stuff to say, huh? In John 6 and verse 51, Jesus said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Matthew 26, 26. And as they were eating, 
They're eating the Passover dinner. Okay, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the, the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Now that's some powerful stuff. All right, let's go back. Exodus chapter 12. You know, the New Testament ties in with the Old Testament. I mean, it, it fits like a glove. The Old Testament points to Christ, and the New Testament fulfills the Old Testament. Verse 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house, of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. Now, you know, when they did the sacrifices in the temple, didn't they burn the sacrifices with fire? And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. And I did an entire Bible study on the, uh, the plagues of Egypt as opposed to the plagues of Revelation. Each one of the plagues of Egypt was against one of the Egyptian gods. I mean, they had a, a, a god of the Nile River, and then they had a frog god. And the Lord, remember the Lord sent the plague of frogs? Oh, yeah. And against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. You know what, people? If when the Lord comes back to the earth and doesn't see the blood of Christ on you and the plague will be upon those people that do not have the blood of Christ. Let's read that again. And the blood shall be upon shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are and when I see the blood I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. See, all those people that believed the Lord and Moses and put the blood on the doorpost, they were spared. But those that didn't believe suffered loss. The firstborn of every single Egyptian died. And imagine that when the Lord comes back and doesn't see the blood of the Lamb on you. Look out, people. Look out. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. What does memorial mean? It means to keep it in your memory. You ever heard of Memorial Day in the United States? It It's... Uh, to bring to remembrance the soldiers that died, supposedly for our freedom. Uh, we don't have as much freedom here in the U.S. as 
we think we do, but we have more than a lot of places. But we're losing more of our freedoms every single day. But a memorial means to keep it in your memory. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Huh. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever? How long's forever? Uh, forever, eternal. So, should we do what the Bible commands? Now, did the Lord say, believe on me, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and keep the Passover? Mm, no, he said, believe on him. But you know what? I would rather see people honoring the Lord with a memorial, doing the Lord's Supper with the bread and the wine, as opposed to Easter bunnies pooping out chocolate eggs for children to hunt. But that's just one person's opinion. Okay? Somebody said that they thought they were uh, black jelly beans, but, you know, what can I tell you? You know, and Easter, when you get a good college dictionary, Easter is a noun. Do you remember a noun? A noun is a person, place, or a thing. Uh, Jesus was a person. That's he, That's a noun. A place. Uh, Washington, D.C. is a place. Moscow is a place. Jerusalem is a place. And a thing. What's a thing? A car. An airplane. Did you know Easter is a noun? Easter is the name of a goddess. She has many different names. She's the queen of heaven. Ishtar. Isis. Easter was the goddess. And her thing was eggs and rabbits. So what did the church do? They substituted something that the Lord wanted to to be kept forever, and substituted a pagan goddess, queen of heaven, with eggs and bunny rabbits. And yet they'll ignore this. And then they'll have ham dinner on Easter Sunday. Something that God called an abomination. In Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 17, they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Now, does not eating swine's flesh make you holy no absolutely not but why is it that the same churches will tell you not to do passover are the same ones that will tell you that it's okay to you know eat swine's flesh that god calls you know an abomination i don't know verse 14 and this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And I'll guarantee you, when we go into the millennial kingdom, we're going to be doing this. Seven days shall, eat, shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven. And this is what this study is all about. Leaven. Yeast. What is leaven? It's yeast. Now, you also have baking soda. Okay? It'll cause bread to rise. But leaven is generally yeast. And 
there are two main types of yeast. There's baker's yeast, which causes uh, carbon dioxide, would cause the bread to rise. I used to make sourdough um, pancakes. And uh, they were quite good, actually. Uh, buckwheat and power uh, sourdough pancakes. They're actually pretty good. And then there is brewer's yeast. And uh, you're talking, that's how they make beer and wine. And uh, how they can make whiskey. Of course, you have to distill the whiskey. You have to concentrate the alcohol. You know, and the Bible does not speak kindly of drunkenness, okay, which is what, you know, brewers yeast. A lot of people, you know, having a glass of wine is one thing, but drunkenness, the Bible condemns it. I mean, totally. Uh, but leaven that I know of is always likened to sin. Breaking of God's laws, the things that God hates. Doing the things that God hates and not doing the things that God loves. Leaven is always in the Bible, my opinion, likened to sin. And there's actually a parable where the church tries to turn that around. We'll get to that. Okay. Verse 15, seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. So, you know, it was very important. People were to go through their house, take all the leaven, and throw it out. Now, this was the letter of the law. What was the spirit of the law? Well, the spiritual application was we were to look upon our lives, reflect upon them, and take all the leaven out of our lives, all the spiritual wickedness. We should every year do house cleaning, so to speak. You know, the Lord was less concerned about yeast in your house as he was the yeast and the leaven in your heart and your hands and your mind. That was what he was concerned about. You know, he, Moses told them to take the yeast out of the house. But the spiritual application was we were to take the leaven out of our lives, the sin. Reflect upon this at least once a year. For one week, It's the feast. Okay? Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Now, when people try to tell you Israel's that Antichrist country over in the Middle East. Uh, well, that's not what my Bible says. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. God made a covenant with Abraham. He reconfirmed it with Isaac. And he reconfirmed it with Jacob and his 12 sons, which became the 12 tribes of Israel. And if you read Galatians 3.29, the Bible says, And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Well, if you're in Christ, you're the heirs to the promise made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob Israel. Don't you ever think for a minute that the Antichrist over in the Middle East are Israel. There might be a remnant among them, possibly, but I don't think so. 
For whosoever eateth unleavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat. That only may be done of you. And ye may observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in the selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Did you know that Israel was to be an army? For in the selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore ye shall observe this day in your generations by an ordinance. How long? Forever. How long is forever? Therefore ye shall observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. Now we're going to do Easter and eat ham dinners. So saith the denomin demon nominational church. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land, ye shall eat nothing leavened, in all your habitations shall ye eat un, uh, unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel, and said, said unto them, Throw out and take you a lamb according to your families, and kill a Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood This is in the base, that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer and will not suffer or allow and will not suffer the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. How long is forever? And it shall come to pass, when ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he hath promised, that ye shall keep the service. And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? In other words, what's the meaning of all this? You know, why are we doing this? You know, when your children ask you, what's, What is going on here? Then ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed their head and worshipped. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not an, a house where there was not one dead. Hmm. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night, and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go, go, serve the Lord as ye have said. So Pharaoh said, Verse 32, also take your flocks and your herds as ye have said and be gone and be gone and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the men that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses and they borrowed of the Egyptians uh borrowed as in long time borrowing, as in forever. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled 
the Egyptians. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. 600,000 men, doesn't include the children, doesn't include the women. And this was thousands and thousands of years ago. Don't you think with a population explosion there'd be more than a measly 12 to 15 million Jews, if this was all of them? And a mixed multitude went up also with them in flocks and herds, even very much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough, which were brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Now, uh, Joseph and his brothers, the 12 tribes, in, in 430 years turned into 600,000. How many people would that be in a couple more thousand years? A lot more than 14 or 15 million Jews, I'll tell you that. Think about it. And the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out, went out from the land of Egypt. It, it is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing him out of the land of Egypt. This is the light of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their, in their generations. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. But every man's servant that is bought for money, that thou hast circumcised him, then he shall eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. See, Christ, when he was hanging on the cross, his bone wasn't broke. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover of the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is home-born, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Thus did all the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the selfsame day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. All right, well, this is going to be the end of part one. I haven't even touched on the leaven yet. I'm just doing the background stuff. So, all right, well, um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.